I'm really pleased today to bring you uh, one of my favorite new small boot makers, uh, Christian Daniel Boots. So hang on to your seats. I'm really pleased today to bring you Christian Ramos from Christian Daniel for an interview and a deep dive into his boot brand, Christian Daniel Boots. G'day, I'm Tech from Bootlosophy and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm recording on this side of the world. Uh, so here we go, Christian Ramos. Hello, Christian, how are you? I'm doing well, how about yourself? Pretty good, pretty good. So. Uh, welcome to the Bootlosophy channel. How are you? I'm really well today. Um, it's a nice day here in San Diego. It's warm. It's pleasant. The sun's out. So, so far, so good. How about That's on your fantastic. <laughs> uh, look, thank you for your time. I know you're a busy man, so I'm really pleased to have you on board to have a talk to you. No, it's it's always a pleasure and I'm glad you have me on. Thank you for inviting me. It's, it's always good to see you. You know, I feel like we're always <laughs> Uh, virtually, so this helps a little bit. Yeah, I, look, I, I think we've communicated before and, you know, with the boots and all that. I feel like I actually know you. <laughs> oh, you do. You do. Yeah. You do. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Uh, how much time have you got before we go any further? But now, is that all right with you? Yeah, we can do that. Definitely. Terrific. OK, so um, look, I, I want to clear something up, I think, because People get a bit confused because your brand is Christian Daniel, but you're Christian Ramos, right? Correct. But uh, Daniel is actually, um, it is my middle name. So so Daniel's my middle name. Daniel's also my father's name, and it's my son's name, too. So Ah, okay. Yeah, so the, there's, 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 yeah it's not, not completely made up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think people do get confused sometimes calling you Christian Daniel. <laughs> but I mean, it's your middle name, so that's fine. Uh, that's actually quite interesting because I in, in following you, yeah. you have a deep family connection. Like, you know, your last is called after your son's birthday. Uh, you know, you yeah. bring your father on board. He's, he's on your website. So obviously family means a lot to you. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think, you know, family is is everything. I think it's even more so recently in my life, it's been highlighted to me. But, um, you know, beyond that, like the whole concept with the name, you know, my dad was like, always had the Western, you know, cowboy boots on. So that's like, my first introduction into like, formal footwear, I guess, to some degree, you know, well to do footwear for sure. So, um, you know, and as I grew older, just I've always been a person with a core belief that like we're all interconnected as human beings, right? And how we facilitate that connection is is different, right? Um, throughout our journey in life, but um, you know that came, you know, with my aunt having her own uh, manufacturing facility, that was really a highlight for me. So it was really like again brought to light, you know, the importance of connection. And when I came up with the name, it was like, well, it just seemed fitting to have my father's name, my name. And, you know, that was one of the first most intimate connections I've ever had. Right. So, yeah, it's it made sense, you know. Yeah. And even your boots, I think um, uh, Fernando was a was a friend of yours. And, and the Larry, where does the Larry come from? Same thing. So, wow, uh, you've done your homework. Uh, yeah, it's actually, <laughs> you know, you're you're reminding me of it. It's just everybody. So one of the things I really set up to do, I mean, was really connect people, right? I mean, literally. So I think, you know, us being here together, the boots, Fernando was my best friend. He passed away at 29. Um, so I named the boot after him. Um, he unfortunately never got to see it really come to fruition, even though we had talked about it for a long time. And then um, Larry was named after my best friend to this day. His name is Larry, Mike, Larry right. Michael, um, right. so Michael, Larry. But uh, Larry was his father's name and he had a big influence on my life. Like he would take us to all the games. He would give me ride homes. Like I've known him since I was five years old. So again, yeah. just, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really fascinated when I'm talking to boot makers, boot brand founders, because like, um, Andrew Savisco from Parkhurst names his, his last and boots after his grandfather's, you know, like mm -hmm. World War II memories or, a lot of his boots are to do with uh, Buffalo street names or suburbs and so on. So there's a there's a connection that 
um, you make, which is I'm, I'm really uh, interested to hear those connections that you're, you're talking about and, and, you know, your belief that we're all connected. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, um, you know, at the root of everything, I think we, you know, whether it's family or friends, like we're all influenced and impacted in different ways. And I think this journey for me, you know, like I've always expressed this, like it's no secret, like I don't have a technical background in it. I I don't really, you know, there's some of the connoisseurs that I always say, like, you know, no more than it, but I just took an idea, a vision, a passion and pursued it. And it's led to something manifesting, but it didn't come alone, right? Uh, you've been a part of it, you know, Brian, St Stitch, I'm Ben, like all these people that have met a lot in the way have helped and fed into it becoming a reality. So I think, you know, along the way, people have impacted me in my life that put me in the position I'm at today. So, you know, even moving forward, I think the next iteration of, of boot or, or shoe or whatever we come up with, I want to name after, you know, a particular customer, right? Have them share uh, their kind of right. tie to it too, you know, because we're all a part of this. Uh, that's brilliant. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself first, just to give, give me your background and history. Like you talked about your aunt and your, you know, remembering your dad in cowboy boots. Tell me a bit about your, you know, growing up in that. Yeah, I mean, I, I he always used to wear them, um, I mean, everywhere. Right. Uh, him, my uncles, I mean, they always had the the Western cowboy boots on and I, it didn't matter if they were in a suit going to church or or, you know, jeans and, you know, button down T-shirt. That was there like it wasn't sandals. It wasn't sneakers. It was that. Right. So I just remember as a kid really being around it and gravitating to particularly the colors back then. Right. Uh, so all the stitching, the inlays, like all that stuff um, without really knowing anything. And then. Um, you know, as I grew up, you know, my aunt uh, in, in Guadalajara, she's still to this day manufacturing. She's probably been around close to 40 years now um, manufacturing uh, shoes, mostly cemented uh, okay. for kind of big brands there. They do like Class, Andrea, like different brands like that. They're right. pretty big, big there. But um, all of that kind of set forth and paved the way. You know, I grew up in, in San Francisco. I'm one of three brothers, um, three males and my mom and dad. And I feel like because of the background between my aunt and us going there every summer, I was exposed to it. So I literally would spend three months in a factory. Right. And back then, it didn't appeal to me the same way, but it was like <laughs> what appealed to me was the connection between the employees, uh, you know, my aunt, my family. A lot of my family to this day works there, right? So right. my older cousins, my uncles, my aunts. So it was, right. it was this like breeding ground for for connection. It's like where everybody right. got together, you know? Right, right. When did you first get the idea of starting Christian Daniel? I would say probably like, I would say the name came to me years ago. I mean, like, I'm talking about probably like 12, 15 years ago. Like I've always been somebody, I've worked in sales predominantly my whole life, right? right. Um, and I've always on some level wanted to have my own thing. Um, right. you know, and so I've tried different things. I mean, I've made candles, I've done all kinds of little things throughout the, the years, but I really, as I think I grew to understand how they were made, um, started buying them first as a consumer myself and really coming to appreciate it. And it came about as I got older, just really appreciating quality stuff, right? I've always had mm -hmm. a, I always like the aesthetic of nice things mm. um so that's cars watches whatever it was but really i love the brand story so same things right like whether mm. it's rolex whether it's you know lvmh mm. whatever mm. um studying that and and the people behind it and usually those are generational right there's several generations that go into it um i've always been fascinated by that and you know it kind of set me on my own little little path collecting and then looking at like i like this about this boot but i don't like right. this is there the potential to make it? So I just, I don't know. I always ran with it, but the name right. is probably in my mind for, I don't know, 12, 15 years. Yeah. Okay. When, when did it become reality though? I mean, there must've been a time when you clicked and went, this is what I want to do. Mm, that was probably like, probably going on f like five, five and a half years ago. Right. Okay. When I, All right. When I first okay. like, set out to to sketch and put together like what I would want to see in a boot and then set forth to buying the plane ticket to go to Leon ended up at Lafarge and from there just hit the ground and the streets running around looking for somebody to make it right yeah. so 
probably like five and a half years ago now. You know, I, I'm I'm always really interested about uh, uh, not just bootmakers, but but business, about what how people feel passionate about their business. Like you're saying, you've done other things, but there wasn't a passion, and you found this, and there's a passion, right? Mm. Um, and I'm wondering in your mind, what's your vision that you're creating for the future? Like what what when you wake up in the mornings, you know, this is what I want to do. Why? Yeah, I mean, I think really what I I mean, it kind of goes back. It sounds you know a little cliche, but um, just the the ability to connect people, right? Like I really just think it's a vessel. So like. I love the fact that I think more and more now in the society we're growing up, a lot of it's fast fashion, a lot of things, you know, I think Amazon's a big disruptor in a good way, right? Like yeah, there's yeah. cons, but the immediacy of things and the way they're produced, right? So our expectancy of things being made fast, um, you know, compromises, I think, some of the back end stuff that we were used to. And you can see that in automobiles, you can see that yeah. in, you know, clothing, boots, yeah. all the same stuff, right? Um, but really it's to connect people with a quality product that they can be proud of. So like, for me, it's like when I put on a pair of boots and, you know, I go out and I take a shower and I feel, it just instantly makes me feel better and different. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. notice it too, if you're out and about and you got a pair of jeans on a pair of sneakers, yeah. that's fine. There's that, that culture too. But, um, everybody, I find that especially people that aren't in that kind of niche, they're like, wow, those are cool. Where'd you get those? You know, or who makes them or it's just yeah. a conversation piece and i think more so the way it makes me feel right it makes yeah. me feel good yeah interesting you know uh, um a lot of people i talk to who get into the boot industry uh, whether they make or buy a lot of people i talk to say when they put on a pair of boots it just makes them feel very different sure um a podiatrist that i did also on on uh, an interview he said well when i put on my boots i feel bulletproof <laughs> you know, uh, it's a good feeling. <laughs> it's a good feel, and, and and listen, it make, it gives me an inch or two in height, so like that's always welcome, you know. I'll yeah, take it. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, when you when you first was doing this, you were yeah. putting a lot of Instagram photos in before the Kickstarter campaign actually yeah. started, and it was like uh, to me, it was a revelation because. I think you were one of the first small boot makers that I saw start up. Like when I got into boots, there were a lot of uh, boot makers that were, had started in 2018, you know, 2019. And you were the first that I'd seen, like literally take photos of this being made and, and you know, developed. And I remember you splashing in the, in the waves in, on some of the uh, yeah. photos. Uh, and then when the Kickstarter came out, it, it was really exciting. How was it for you? Yeah, I mean, similarly, it was um, it was an interesting journey, you know, I think just trying to see it was taking an idea at that time and seeing if it was viable. And, um, you know, again, I think, you know, I never had social media prior to actually launching that. Right. And okay. everybody, you're going to need some sort of social media. They thought something was wrong with me. I didn't have any <laughs> not my face, not Instagram, not Facebook, nothing, no YouTube. Um, and. I just always was like, well, people that know me know me in person, right? But I'm so thankful for those conversations because it allowed me to start the Instagram and ultimately, I mean, connect with people like yourself and others that have been so instrumental to my journey. Um, and I really like it allowed me to really expand beyond my little circle. And it's been tremendous. I mean, some of the best relationships come from um, those interactions and, you know, the Stitch Down community, all those things, people. Um, it's been incredible. So yeah. really, uh, the Kickstarter campaign was incredible for that. It really allowed me to get to know the people. I say like, you know, now it's like, it's quality over quantity. Like a lot of the people, I'm not looking to have 4 million. I mean, that's great if that happens, right? But I would say having conversations like this with you, getting to know people, knowing people by name, having their phone numbers, like texting them, giving them phone calls when they buy stuff. Like that aspect is probably the most rewarding and has been throughout this entire journey. So the Kickstarter really just allowed me um, to do that on a more personal level. So um, take me through how you actually built the business. You know, you had the idea, you you flew to Leon. What what happened next? Like, like what did you do? Yeah, I mean, I flew to Leon. Um, you know, I had found Lafarque on there and I don't know why, but like I was just, I was like, I have to go check that place out, right? I just, it was, it was annoying. 
and I went there, um, you know, they gave me a tour. I, I think I've shared this, but, you know, um, it was the first time, you know, I, I made up a story about having an appointment there, showed up. The sales guy came out. His name was Robert. At the time he's no longer there. He gave me a tour. And midway, he's like, hey, Christian, like, I know you don't have an appointment, but, <laughs> but it says a lot about you that you're in front of me, you know? And um, he had a core belief that also really stuck with me. He said, you know, um, I always treat people like they're somebody because you never know who they're going to become. Yeah, good. And I was like, wow, that's great. And so he did. He treated me as if though, you know, I was $300 million company and connected me. And from there, I met a manufacturer, um, small, you know, I remember I went to go get my feet measured and they were talking about last, all these things at the time were like, if you're talking to me about building a spaceship, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, it was interesting, but, um, you know, I paid for development. I was naive and excited and and I ended up getting robbed, right? The first, right. The, they took money on, you know, a small development run and stuff and disappeared with it. Um, but that was my introduction into it. And from there, it was, you know, continuing to figure out who could do it. Um, eventually, I landed with um, a, another manufacturer there. And it was always like, I've been through probably, probably about five or six manufacturers um, right. out there. Right. Always, I've searched in Portugal, I've you know, got quoted in Spain, in the U.S. also. Right. But it just made a lot of sense to stay there. And it was like, you never really got to have the quality or what I had in my mind, right? So again, it was like, I don't have the technical background, but from having, at that point, I had like 14 different pairs of different brands. Right. So I knew what I wanted to see or what I wanted to provide. And it was like, I kept moving until I found something found that it. was right. right. Um, and when I, when I finally saw it and, and had it, I was like, oh, this is it. At that point, it was like, that's the best place I have taken it to. So right. um, that was kind of the journey. But along the way, it was, you know, I, I'm a big, uh, big believer in, in, in God. And I think, you know, God placed all these different people in my life at the right time, at the right situation and um, tremendous support that, you know, led for all of this to happen. And it was just very, I just kept moving, you know. Yeah, and you learn from experience too, right? Of course. I mean, yeah, I'm grateful that my first experience, you know, in hindsight, at the moment, that's not how I felt, but in hindsight, that that got robbed, it made me a little bit, you know, take uh, yeah. more precautions as things went yeah. on. So. Yeah, I I have a saying: there's no mistakes, there are learning opportunities. Absolutely. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So you you have your own factory now? Yeah. So you know, it's it's it's. And we say factory, but it's more like a workshop. It's it's smaller. There's uh there's five people involved in it. Um, so it's a it's small operation, but I think you know the the benefit to that is you know you're able to control um, you know the volume, the quality. We're able to work through things um, as a cohesive team. I think I've been um, fortunate enough to have people that are, are incredible and that work well together because yeah. you know managing personalities uh yeah. when it comes to app is interesting but uh, <laughs> i have a great general manager shop foreman whatever you want to call him like he's incredible um and people really take to him so he's been able to do and you know, organize a lot of things down there because you know it's, i go back and forth um but we have just an incredible relationship and i really think I, right now we probably have the best you know uh best stitcher in all of Leon, including the big factories. So like, I'm super grateful and he's worked everywhere there. Um, but he's amazing. We have a good relationship and we're kind of, you know, for being small, we're like ver vertically integrated. So we have everything yeah. from, you know, we can do the boxes, we can do the bags, we can do the paper, we can do yeah. uh, shoes, the patterns, the whole nine. Right. Right. And was the Larry made in that factory? The one, the yeah. one I've got? Yeah. yeah, that was the first one. Um, that was yeah. our first ever production run um so yeah that's that's what we made there beautiful boot and the stitching thank that double row stitching is just yeah. like beautiful really. yeah, thank you. yeah, yeah. It, it was you know as i as i understood more and got deeper into this i mean the stitch down is not easy and not to get it that precise i know like viber does a great job too with it um yeah. but it's really hard it's like why a lot of brands truman different ones have moved away yeah. from it because it's like yeah. you can have boot and an expensive piece of leather on it and at the end it can go south you know yeah so it's a tricky yeah. thing yeah 
it, it's beautiful when it comes together. I mean, there are some brands like the Pacific Northwest brands that kind of have big butch stitches, which is, you know, it, it's relevant to, to their brand and their yeah. style of boot. Yeah. But to make one like that is really precise, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to, to see him, you know, run through, you know, multiple pairs. And it's just like the hand-eye coordination, um, I mean, the year, I mean, he just frankly has a lot of, a lot of experience and it's incredible because not everybody can do that, you know? I mean, yeah. But why did you give the option of stitch down? Like, like, you know, you're good. Your welting is, is fairly standard, but you gave an option of stitch down. Sure. I mean, I think a lot, you know, I think I was trying to appeal to a lot of what I then grew to really love. Right. I mean, I think like I've mentioned, I fell in love with the Chelsea and that forever has a special place in my heart. Um, it was the first boot I ever purchased, but as I started to dive deeper in this, you know, you start to expand your horizons and, and yeah. the instructions, the different makeups, the different, you know, styles, everything. Um, and I really fell in love with like the skill behind, uh, necessary to create the stitch down. I mean, I like mm. the way personally, um, mm. And I really, when I, I saw somebody actually try to do it, and I saw, I mean, obviously before we we have our stitcher now, I saw many people try to do it, and I was like, wow, this is not easy. And some of these people had 10 years of experience and right. they worked at some of these larger factories over there, and I was, like, right. confused because I'm like, I would not accept that. Right. But that yeah. was going out into production, you know, so it was interesting. Yeah. Um, stitch down in particular is, is very challenging. So I don't know. I mean, I really just took to to how it was made, the craft and the extra level of of, of craftsmanship necessary to produce it. Yeah, I, I think it's boot to boot. Uh, there are some that I've had recently, and I won't name the brand, but you can see the stitch down isn't as precise. It's not parallel. It meets sometimes. Sure. It does the work, but it you know sure. it's a rugged boot versus a dress. And I and I think what I like about this is. Uh, the Wicked and Craig is a, is quite a, a rugged leather, but sure. it's put together finely. You know, I mean, I like the the pinking and the broguing is so precise, Christian. I mean, that's just beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. That's very kind of you, David. Um, yeah. And um, in terms of your design, like the Fernando, which my my black pair, which I love with the Dr. Soul, one of the things I find about the design of, of the Fernando is um, a beautiful last, but also the little touches like leaving this in sort of almost natural leather so that it frames the black, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the little touches that I guess you're adding in when you when you're designing the boots. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, it's it, truthfully, it's like we all take inspiration from each other. Right. Like there's only so many ways you can you can change the elastic. You can do different things so, like there you know we added this the c and the d the logo on the mm. pool right it was something you know mm. in design like well mm. you know how we kind of brand it but mm. something subtle i like subtle things right mm. so that you'll never notice unless you pay attention to it same thing like mm. you just um you know the contrast between the welt and the, the color leaving it more natural like those are little things but i noticed them i mean we did the same thing on the um on the tongue of the the, the larry the lace-up same thing mm -hmm. Um, so little things like that, you know, trying to differentiate it and, and mm -hmm. take on it. And, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it's difficult these days. You, you, what is a true innovative boot, I, I guess, has been invented, right? We've got sure. mottos, we've got service boots, we've got Chelsea boots. So adding the detail, I mean, the contrast of the, 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 the light natural wealth, but also the white stitching. Right. You know, you could have gone for black stitching. You could have gone right. for a stitching that matched the welt. But just having the three colors is, you know, you need that thinking, which I appreciate as a as a boot lover. You look at it and go, OK, that's different. <laughs> Thank <laughs> right. you. Love it. Yeah. I think ultimately so, it boils down to like the last two and the fit and all those things. But yeah, I mean, it's. They're two different lasts, right? Yeah. Two different you lasts. You change the last? Yeah. Because they're, they, the they are if I can get them. They're, they're, they're similar but different. This is a little bit wider in the ball. Yeah. 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 I, so, it, um, sorry, go on. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, where next in terms of new designs? Yeah, I think right now um, we're working on, we had a sneaker that we wanted to release and um, 
you know, I had a, a conversation with Brian Boot Hunter. Uh, I was fortunate enough to, to see him in person. We, we live over here close to each other. But, um, you know, he really put something to think. Like, I was ready to come out with that design. And I just feel like, you know, I don't love it. Like, I like it, but I don't love it. And, um, you know, I wanted something like for summer here. and this, But I'm like, we're going back to redoing it so that it's something like, I love that I can be proud of and put out and have people sure. also love, you know? Um, so we're working on a sneaker. Um, right now we got um, a loafer also in the works. Um, we're working on the design, finishing that up to start running some samples, hopefully as early as the next, probably two weeks from now. Okay. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I love like, for instance, I love Grant Stone's loafer, right? Like I, I was able to meet up with Wyatt like two weeks ago here and, I love his loafer. Love it. So, you know, taking inspiration and trying to get something that, that can work here. San Diego's a perfect, you know, weather temperature for for a loafer <laughs> and for a sneaker. So um, that's something else. But then really just um, immediately, I guess, and I'll send you a pair. Um, the We're doing the Larry in a Chelsea. So, oh. yeah. yeah, I really like the way it's come out. I'm really happy with it. It's super comfortable. Um, and that's that's probably like immediately on the horizon. Right. Well, oh, that's excellent. Look forward to that. Um, in terms of where you're going, do you see yourself remaining like a group MTO, small batch, or do you see yourself expanding and going like Thursday, you know? Yeah, I mean, right now, um, you know, I think the main focus is like running – small batch um ready to ship right like that's kind of the next that's on the forefront right now um you know we've done a lot of like mto or just pre-orders and stuff like that and while that's been great i think you know at this point you know having the infrastructure um wanting to do you know maybe 30 40 pairs at a time and just seeing how those go and then build off that um but yeah i think that's that's the main focus at the moment just having some ready to you know maybe one or two leathers at the moment producing right. up in between that then dropping you know some some pre-orders with some some rare stuff yeah. but uh what you know we still want to build right we're relatively small we want people to um connect buy wear appreciate you know um you know thursday's a whole nother whole nother monster altogether big monster i mean they've yeah. grown really i mean you take your hat off to them no no criticism of course. you know Amazing. Yeah. Um, but also you mentioned um, connecting with Watt. Uh, I know yeah. that you connect with uh, Kevin Wilson at Caswell. It, it's a really generous world, isn't it? It is. I mean, it, it goes back to uh, Wyatt's incredible. Kevin's incredible. I mean, Brian, yourself, like so many people, uh, Kyle, uh, uh, Bakers, too. I mean, um, everybody are, you know, yeah. Mikhail. Arnold, like we connect, there's a lot of us that connect regularly and everybody's been incredible um, in this community. I mean, Ben from Sitchon, everybody really um, helps. And I think it's beautiful to see because I think in a world that, you know, there's a lot of division and people can be hyper competitive. I mean, here, at least my experience has been that everybody helps. And yeah. it's not even like, what are you, what are you going to do for me? What can I, you know, it's just yeah. it only comes yeah. from the heart and that's beautiful to yeah. see. Yeah, I mean there are some there are some weird nuts on social media, oh. but they're a very small minority. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't have the good without the bad, right? That's that's kind yeah. of life. Yeah. yeah, you just kind of let them go. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I always say where they uh, recently been saying like where where two people are right, there can't be peace. You know. Yeah, I, I think one of the things um, that I like about the boot world, and I I think is represented by people like you is you're right there are a lot of divisions in the world there's political divisions there's sure. there's, there's racism there's geographic right. uh, divisions but the i think the core of the people i've met since i've gotten to boots it, that's beyond that it's let's just talk about the thing we love it, do you sure. find that yeah i definitely have found that i mean i think all my interactions especially in the space with people i mean has been positive right like it doesn't change that we as individuals you know, have, like you said, it can be social, economic, it can be political, religious, whatever it is, like our differences. But I think it's the commonality of what we share. You know, it's always like 
I think it applies to the world, right? You probably have more in common with the person you dislike than the dislike you have for them. If you're willing That's to right. look, take the the effort to to evaluate that. And it's definitely been my experience here. Like everybody has helped, right? That's why I say this isn't done alone. And I always say if it ended today, like the beauty of it would be the experiences and the connection of those memories I have from genuinely connecting with people that one, I mean, like you and I being here together, like we were strangers, right? Yeah. We spent, you know, whatever age you are, whatever age I am, like we spent our whole lives being strangers and now we're connected, yeah. right? So like yeah. that yeah. itself is beautiful. And I think yeah. the power of, of yeah. you know, God, the universe, like all these things coming together, you know? Yeah. And, and there's an enjoyment in it. You know, of course. yeah, of course. which which brings me to, um, I guess, Stitch Down, uh, Ben yeah. Stitch Down and his yeah. uh, gathering in New York. Uh, yeah. Are you going this year in October? I, I'm thinking about it. I mean, I, I got to um, I got to evaluate it. I mean, I'd love to from the just again, going back to the connection piece. I mean, I talked to Wyatt about it. Kevin asked me about it. You're the asking me about it. So I feel like <laughs> maybe that's a that's a sign, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Last, did you go to the last one? No, I didn't, and and I'm not sure I can go to this one. I mean, it's just it's it's just a long way away for me. For but sure. I would love to because it's I I think that's a that's a face to face gathering of all these people I've spoken to, you yeah. know, or DM'd or whatever. Very enjoyable experience by the old sounds of it. I mean, I was talking to Dale, who was yeah. telling me about it, and it just you know I I'd love to go, love to go. Yeah, I mean, it'd be obviously as you know, it'd be a great experience for you and your such a, a big influence in the space and you know i think you it would be great for people to meet you in person um i would love to meet you in person um i went to the first i was fortunate enough to go to the very first sit down that uh ben had in in chicago yeah yeah I mean that was insane i mean that was <laughs> i don't know i mean i know he you know he's running other ones so but i feel like that was one of the best ones so it was great yeah. good people good connection yeah well, I, I think it's going to become an institution. So even if I miss this one, I'll be there one day. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Look forward to it. Um, I, one of the things that when I was thinking about this video was uh, talking to you about some of the challenges you face, like um, in, in the Fernando, I think, wasn't it getting supplies from Dr. Soul became a big problem? Uh, and yeah. that, I guess, was COVID? Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of like, I mean, it overlapped to some degree. I think it was just during, everybody was having, during that time, I just remember talking to a bunch of people, right? And everybody was happy. So it wasn't by any means Dr. Soul's lack of effort or they nah. dropped the ball, just what was going on in the world, right? So like at one yeah. point, stuck, like my shipping was on a boat for like 30 extra days or something crazy like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Um, and then even once it got off, it was clearing customs and it was just so backed up. Um, and, you know, those are things you just kind of deal with that, you know, you got to roll with. But it was very hard because at the time, you know, I was in the middle of, you know, I had set a certain date and you want to make sure you take care of the people that, that back you. Right. It's their money. It's their time, their efforts, the way I see it. So it's like it was a challenge. But, um, you know, luckily, every I, would, I mean, really, everybody was understanding and accommodating. Yeah. I was super grateful for that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, definitely some challenges. I mean, and even even now i mean i think you know part of the the transition to have like our own thing was was well intended it just came with a whole new set of challenges right mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but um but you work through those and you keep moving and mm -hmm. and you know god opens up a path and you just gotta go through it but it, it doesn't come without nothing i feel like nothing that's worthwhile and that saying is cliche but it's true it comes without challenges so um that's kind of where we're at, you know. I think you dealt with it well, though. Uh, you you kept people informed. Uh, yeah. And part of that social media thing would help about you. You're telling people what was happening. So, like, I I know that I was waiting and going, oh, it's it's wow. past you, but I know sure. why. I, I I was told about it, you know. So, I think we all became quite patient because I know um, in my day job yeah. <laughs> as a management consultant, I know in that period I had clients here in Australia who were shipping things out and getting things shipped in and supply mm -hmm. chains you know container ships they were all over the place mm -hmm. it, it wasn't just one supplier or anything what? like like you know backed up everywhere <laughs> so well, well, dif well, difficult times 
Yeah, of course. And you understanding that, obviously, from your own profession, I mean, you see it, you know, probably day in, day out from various standpoints. It's like, you know, as as a supplier, like you, you, you don't want to be late. Like, trust me, no one goes into it and says, yeah, you know what, this client, I think I'm going to delay it like a month. I just see what he, what happens. You know, no, of course <laughs> you want to expectations and, and, you know, get there, get it in a timely manner. I know what it's like to be a consumer. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so same thing, you know, um, and now it's the flip side. I mean, I think what's, what's interesting is the same way I wanted or expected things from manufacturers, I've now, I, I mean, I don't know if I, I started trying to work, we're figuring things out. I've run one production run for, for a brand and then right. work taking on working with others, like, but with what we can handle. Um, right. And it's now interesting, right? I'm on the other side of the coin. Ah, okay. Right. So, so, you, sure. so you're, you're, you're making for some other brands as well, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're definitely wow. open. I mean, if anyone's looking, you know, give me a, send me a message or an email <laughs> or call, but um <laughs> Yeah, we we ran a successful production run from A to Z. Um, well done. Yeah, thank you. That's uh, I appreciate that. Um, and they were happy. So we were happy. They were happy. And I think it was really interesting to be on the flip side of the coin and just you know trying to fulfill the same expectations kind of you had. It was yeah. the other side. It was really interesting. So now I've really been on on both sides of the spectrum. Um, but yeah, it was it was good. Yeah. So. I think one of the things that came from that bad period, sure, uh, customers don't realize is prices went up and stayed up, like <laughs> shipping prices and all that. You know, in in somebody will shaft us somewhere, right? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And when 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 um, supply is is difficult to meet, people raise their prices to meet it. So uh, right. shipping charges go up, you know, all, all of that sort of stuff. And I think customers don't realize and they complain, oh, you know, Grant Stone went up 50 bucks and Christian Daniel is more expensive. People don't realize that background of why, right? Sure, of course. I mean, that's part of it. And, you know, everybody, I, I also, as just before, you know, starting a business as a consumer, I'm like, this is expensive. Why don't you charge? I want it for, I want the best thing for, you know, 50 cents, right? That's what I want, yeah. right? That yeah. now understanding and appreciating it from both sides. It really gives you the other side of the coin. And I think that has built a lot of, for me, empathy, understanding. I'm patient, you know, um, with things and situations that, that don't come about, at, and especially when it comes to, to purchasing stuff um, from companies, especially ones that aren't, you know, Nike or Amazon yeah. or whoever, right? Like that expectation yeah. for everybody across the board, that's unrealistic, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, is. It is. And yeah, and, and I think you, Look, even if you buy things from Amazon, they're, they're lower price, but they're also lower quality, right? You get what I, you pay for. It's an interesting model. Like I myself, and I mean, I mentioned them, but I myself don't have an Amazon account. I haven't had it for, you know, five or six years since I, about five and five and a half since I ventured on this thing. I don't use them personally, right? And to each yeah. their own, but yeah. um, it's the same, the same understanding, like being, you know, from, I'll speak about what, what we have going on. Um, you know, the reason our prices are like, if I could give them to you for a hundred dollars and, you know, make a living and be able to play the employees a reasonable wage, right? Like, uh, you know, I would, but that's just not realistic. Um, yeah. but what ends up happening in my situation is like these employees all worked at different places, right? So, they were also frustrated with being a number in an assembly line, essentially, right? Like right, right. The was stunted, they were tired of it. And, you know, what they saw in what I basically propositioned to them was the ability to be creative, the ability to work in a good culture, a good environment for them, and with the ability and opportunity to really develop their skill set and be part of something that was collaborative. And, you know, they were on board that really... I think sold them ultimately. And so now it's like they have families, they have children I've met. Like, you know, it's not just like these are some strangers. Like I have a relationship with each and every single one of them. I know their family intimately. Right. So, yeah. um, you know, in order to sustain that being as small as we are, my cost even just to produce is a lot higher than whoever. Right. They yeah. would say, yeah, that's a lot, but it is what it is at the moment. Right. So yeah. that's why things are the way they are. 
Yeah, you you've described heard you describe your team as being like a family. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, when I go there, I usually, you know, go to the, their homes. We all get together. We all go to eat. I mean, I know their kids. I know what school they go to. I mean, these aren't people that just kind of work yeah. for me and then that's it. I mean, we all have a relationship. We communicate every single day. Like it's it's a small team, but everybody knows each other. And I think it's the culture I set out to establish, right? Because it's it's what I always wanted and didn't really see when I was at the other places, right? Like, yeah. and naturally, I mean, it's yeah. hard. There's people and different personalities and everybody, but I was like, this can't be, like there has to be another way, you know? And so I think it took a lot of up and down, but I think we finally have that. And it's it's beautiful you know other than our other than our stitcher um i think it's pretty much everybody who we kind of started with and we added added him and he's been amazing to yeah. to the group and on the other side of the coin they feel appreciated they don't feel like they're part of a line you know they 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 contribute more they don't necessarily work harder but they might but they certainly feel like they contribute more and and they do don't they yeah, of course. I mean, I think it, I, at least my experience has been like they're bought in because they don't feel like they're just working for a check, but they're yeah. they're working they're working to to build something that they also have ownership in. You know, As like a meaning. Are, exactly. Um, yeah. And you know, they have that creativity, right? I always say like, if you see something that I don't, like, let yeah. me know. If we have to, yeah. you know like empowering them to make decisions right like a simple yeah. and that was something um that was very interesting to me like in the beginning it was like they were that they weren't doing those so i was like hey if if we can't stitch all these pairs today right or we can't stitch them properly right for whatever reason if so and so is sick and he's not you feel like they're not going to do the best job today they're tired they had a long day whatever happened at home like let's not go ahead and do it today just yeah. because i asked for them to be done today Let's yeah. go ahead and have the ability to say, hey, you know what, Christian, they're not going to be done today. They might be done in two days. Here's what's yeah. going on. That's fine. Like you have the autonomy to make decisions too, because I trust you the same really way good. I would need to make those decisions. And I think, you know, th there was a couple of situations that happened. You know, one of those was actually true about the stitching. And I was like, like, we can't do this. Like this can't go out. Yeah. Right? Really so good. Right? It was like the leather, right? Everything, the, the outsoles that cost money, all of it. Um, but it wasn't focusing on what we lost, but just the opportunity of like, hey, we can all make, we're a team. So like, we're all part of this and we can all make decisions. Yeah. If I can see something, let me know and vice versa, right? Like yeah. if there's a gap, yeah. we all, you know? That's a really good philosophy. I, in, in my business, I look at businesses and there are three things that make a successful business. And I think you have all three. Um, the first is the vision that drives you. So when things get hard, that's the vision that motivates you. I want to get there. That's where I want to be. The second is the right corporate culture. And you're creating that through people who want to contribute to something meaningful. And I think the third you also have, you've kind of described it. And that's like a strong pathway of where you want to go. You know, you're, you're looking at loafers and where you want to go. I asked you about, is it group MTO? You've got a clear idea in your head about how you want to create this business. Um, so I'm, I'm interested how you got those three together. Like you, you've thought that through, I think, Christian. I think on some level, right? Like, and I think they've been, they've kind of come about through a byproduct of like what I knew from the past, right? Like going back to my dad, going back to my aunt, going back to my own experience as a, as a collector, right? Then evolving into, I mean, right? Like I, like I said, I've been, I've been robbed, and I was, I was really thinking about this the other day too. Is like, all that time, or up until we started selling, which was like maybe less than two years ago now, um, through the Kickstarter, and even then, it hasn't been consistent the way like I'm describing now. Like now, we got to have stuff ready to ship, right? Um, but all of that, it, it's like I was going to school, you know. I never uh, viewed it going to school. My my tuition just looked, you know, a little different, the education, but I actually got real world experience. I've been in giant factories. I've got quoted, you know, like I said, everywhere from the US to Spain to Portugal to overseas to Mexico. So I learned in LA, right? Like so I've learned 
what what the prices look like. I've learned how different companies operate at different right. different levels of success. Um, I've got to mingle with people like you know Kyle and and Wyatt and all these people, Ben, and all these people like yourself that that know more than I did, right? And have helped so a lot of it has come about through through that experience um but some of it is innate right the connection part um who i am just you know i i want to make people feel seen loved heard um that's something i want to facilitate so that comes into creating that culture right that that i also didn't see at some of these places but mm. know it's possible and the same thing then goes back to the product right like mm. is it is the world's greatest boot uh, depends who you ask, you know, but I am happy enough, proud enough about it that I can, that I feel comfortable putting it out in the market. Right. That wasn't always the case. Right. Um, I took what it took, but yeah, I think some of that was experience, timing, all of those things coming together. And some of it is just naturally who, who I am, you know? And um, so what's the further development of Christian Ramos, the man, Oh man, it's like <laughs> the man and the business are intertwined. I'll tell you, like, you know, we, we'd have to do another, I don't know, six hour session, but uh, <laughs> I mean it, um, but we could do it. We could do it. I don't know how many, I don't know how this would affect your viewers, but um, I'll tell you, let me see if I can try to put this together <laughs> somewhere here. Um, you know, my journey has been interesting. Um, you know, I struggled a lot with um, with addiction, um, alcohol, drugs. I mean, just lost all these things that have kind of impacted my life negatively, right? Um, and I say that because, you know, at the time I viewed it like such a negative, but where I am today, right? And I think it's only been through a lot of pain and and suffering and consequences that have been severe enough to actually get me to the point of wanting to make a genuine change, right? And through that experience, it's like, I've really cultivated for the first time a relationship with 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 God, right? Like for me, it's, it's Jesus, right? For whoever else, it's whatever. I'm saying that has drawn me to, um, you know, have something greater than myself. It's always been like self-will, what I wanted, what I needed, um, and especially in, you know, in addiction, it's a powerful disease, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, being on the other side of it now and, you know, being in recovery meeting people that are like-minded, you know, um, I've changed, like everybody who's come into my life now is, is different, right? Is, uh, like I go to church, I, I care, I'm present, right? Like, I, I see the world through a different lens now. Like it, it, it's, it's incredible. Um, and I think that has actually led me to have the relationships I've always wanted, or I thought I had that I didn't. Right. So I really have intimate relationships with men, with women, with my family, with my son, like, mm. um, with the, the employees, like it, it, it has changed everything. Um, but I, it, for me, it didn't come, you know, there's, I, I like to think there's two types of people, people that can learn from somebody's experience and say, wow, like I'm going to go that way. or I'm not going to go that way. I unfortunately was the type that had to experience it for myself. But um, right. currently in this, I think I'll bring it full circle, but uh, with the business and everything else I do, it's like, I'm in surrender to God's will. Like I want right. my will to align with God's will. If it doesn't, right. I don't want it. And right. that path is a little unclear to some degree, right? So like I'm putting forth uh, my best effort and I'm letting him drive the bus. I right. don't want to be in control of the bus, whatever that, wherever he takes me, like I'm in control. That's not, I think sometimes people may interpret that as passive. Like that's not passive. That means right. stay in constant action. Um, somebody said it to me this way. It's like um, the action is on, on me. Uh, the timing and the outcome is on God. Right. I understand. And, I, I, I get it. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't want to bring it up, but, but you, you, you brought up the addiction and I, I yeah, think you, you, I think you mentioned it uh, in the beginning when the Fernando was being developed. And I remember that was what made me think, oh, brother, this is the man I want to get to know, <laughs> because you went from there to developing something 
And, right. and I, I, I think in one of my reviews, I said, you pulled yourself up by the bootstraps. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I really admire that, you know, uh, and that's that was one of the things that, oh, I want to know about this man and this brand. <laughs> so, you know, I, I take my hat off to you. Uh, I really admire you, my brother. Thank you. Likewise. <laughs> likewise. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, look, we're just coming up to about an hour. Okay. Um, I want to thank you for your time, but let's finish off with with um, uh, I guess your thoughts on where you see this boot world coming to. Like uh, to me, I've worn a few boots here and there, but um, the boot world seemed to really start expanding in the late twenty teens, right? And it really grew, um, and now. I don't know whether it's because I'm in it, but I see a lot of people interested in boots. How do you see it going? Yeah, I I would agree with you. I mean, I think right now, um, you know, even talking to Wyatt, and I think I mentioned this, it's like, you know, for our particular type or niche, right, I would say, you know, anywhere from like 300 to the 800s or 900s, like it is a certain person that can appreciate that. But with everything being mass produced, I think, it'll eventually come to the point it's coming, I think in some ways where people can really take appreciation to something that is handmade, handcrafted, that has these beautiful, I mean, these leathers, like, and I'm familiar with some, but when I see them and I get to touch them and put them on my feet, I'm like, these are insanely gorgeous. Like that's what really captivates people. People are like, those are not what I'm used to. So where did you get those? What are they from? What are they? Yeah. Right. Question. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, there's definitely like an appreciation growing within people. And I think, you know, going back to Thursday, like Thursday is um, kind of pivotal in that, right? They're the lower price point, but also yep. welted. And because of the large volume they do, they get somebody on board and then they're like, well, what else is out there? Right. So yeah. then they say, oh, so what else yeah. is next? And then it's just a matter of preference of, you know, whatever they're into. But um, I continue to see, you know, Goodyear welted footwear continuing to grow. Um, you know, I think there's, there's obviously obstacles, right. And we can point to different time, the economy, whatever it is, but the, I think people's appreciation for things, especially as more of those disappear in other markets, will also continue to grow. I mean, I, I guess um, guys like yourself will continue to grow. Uh, and as small bootmakers come on, they'll continue to grow. That's business. Do you see, uh, do you see a time when uh, it becomes quite like a, like, a, like a big business? Or do you still see small small boot makers going oh i want to make a boot and, and just popping up all over the place i mean there, there's a lot of challenges to those people right <laughs> there's a lot yeah but i i i i guess i i pray it becomes big you know um not only from a selfish standpoint but just from like i said like i think you know there's a lot to admire to appreciate it goes back to the way it makes you feel you know um especially as you're used to other things. But I feel like the more people can, the more the smaller ones become the medium ones and the, the medium ones become the bigger ones. I think, you know, it can, you know, cause kind of a chain reaction in that way and, you know, grow in the market or grow in where you see them or, you know, even retail with that kind of uh, transition going on too. It's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, more people are on their phones, more people are on the internet. Yeah. And the true. So, yeah. I think what you're doing and, and others are, are helping facilitate that that expansion. Mm, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, so um, those are all the questions I've got. It's been a great to have a, a chat with you. Um, do you want some last words to your to your customers and the viewers? Yeah, I mean, just really grateful for all the connection for the people that have supported for those that may support, you know, um, you can always reach out on Instagram at Christian Daniel Boots, DM me. I mean, if you want to get on a phone call, we can email uh, Christian Daniel Boots at gmail.com also. Um, and then we're having we have some pairs up that are discounted at the time uh, right now. Um right. If you're considering it, you're on the fence, take what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you an additional discount code. I mean, I just want people to get them, try them, have them, you know, wear them, give them as gifts, you know, um, yeah. 
get them out. It helps us grow. It helps, you know, um, what we were trying to do long term. Um, and also, you know, who cares? They're discounted by the next one at full price, but get these on your feet or somebody's feet. So I'll send you a code that you can post or get out to your followers as well. Fantastic. Thank you. And just to remind people how beautiful that is, <laughs> that that is a beautiful boot and Thank comfortable. <laughs> well, it's good it. at you because I'm biased, you know, so. Is there, is that <laughs> Well, that's that's terrific. Thank you, Christian, for your time. It's been a really enjoyable chat. Uh, really love seeing you face to face after all our DMs together. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you having me on. It's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure seeing your face. So we can do this whenever you want. And I'll be sending you a pair so you can let me know what you think of the Chelsea's on that new last. Thank you very much. Thank you. Of course. Have a great day. You too.